The Ford 3.5-liter EcoBoost made its production debut in 2010, ushering in a new era for Ford's performance and efficiency strategy. While it was officially branded EcoBoost at launch, its earliest appearance was in concept form as the Twin Force V6 in the 2007 Lincoln MKR, a name chosen to showcase its twin turbocharged heart. Ford based the EcoBoost on the proven 3.5-liter Duratec 35 V6 architecture from the Cyclone family, adapting it with advanced forced induction and fuel delivery systems to achieve V8-like performance with better economy. Production takes place at the Cleveland Engine Plant No. 1 in Brook Park, Ohio, an investment that Ford heavily modernized specifically for this power plant. One of the most groundbreaking technologies the 3.5-liter EcoBoost introduced over its predecessor was the integration of twin turbochargers with direct fuel injection, uncommon in a high-volume gasoline truck engine at the time. This pairing was designed to maximize low-end torque while maintaining power delivery deep into the rev range, all without the weight and thirst of a large displacement V8. The turbochargers, supplied by BorgWarner, work in tandem with an air-to-air -air intercooler to maintain charge density and resist heat soak, a crucial factor in towing and high-load situations. Later generations pushed this concept further with electronically actuated wastegates for more precise boost control, ensuring power delivery is both immediate and consistent under varying driving conditions. At its core, this is a 3.5-liter V6 with a 60-degree bank angle, twin overhead camshafts, and four valves per cylinder, for a total of 24 valves. Valve timing is managed by Ford's twin independent variable camshaft timing system, which continuously and separately adjusts intake and exhaust cam, phasing to match load and speed demands. The block and cylinder heads are cast from aluminum to reduce mass, and inside, a forged steel crankshaft and piston cooling oil jets enhance durability under boost. The first-generation 3.5-liter EcoBoost, produced from 2011 to 2016, set the stage for Ford's turbocharged V6 era. Rated at 365 horsepower and 420 pound-feet of torque in most F-150 applications, it combined a forged steel crankshaft, six-bolt main bearing caps, and a direct-acting mechanical bucket valve train for strength and simplicity. It relied solely on gasoline direct injection, enabling cooler intake charge temperatures and precise fuel metering for higher power output. Early 2011 to 2012 models used smaller BorgWarner turbos with an integrated blow-off valve and a Hitachi fuel system. It was paired with the 6R 86-speed automatic and allowed F-150s to tow up to around 11,300 pounds and haul payloads approaching 3,000 pounds depending on configuration. However, many owners experienced timing chain stretch issues, especially in early models. This often presented as a cold start rattle and could eventually trigger camshaft phasing problems or check engine lights if left unaddressed. In addition, its direct injection-only setup led to eventual carbon buildup on intake valves, and its log-style cast iron exhaust manifolds could warp or crack under prolonged high-load use. The second generation arrived for 2017, keeping the same displacement but re-engineering nearly every part. The biggest change was the introduction of the dual-injection port fuel and direct injection system, running port injection at 60 pounds per square inch and direct injection at 2,400 pounds per square inch. Larger turbos with electronically controlled wastegates improved boost precision, and MAR-M 247 alloy turbine wheels increased durability. Ford swapped the old bucket tappets for a roller finger valve train with hollow camshafts to shed weight and added a dual primary timing chain system to address the Gen 1's chain stretch concerns. The crankshaft, bearings, and connecting rods were all reinforced, piston undersides were redesigned for better cooling, and a variable displacement oil pump improved lubrication efficiency. In F-150 form, the standard output Gen 2 made 375 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque, paired with Ford's 10R 80 10-speed automatic. Towing capacity climbed to as high as 13,200 pounds, with payload topping 3,200 pounds in certain configurations. A high-output version debuted in the 2017 Raptor and later the F-150 Limited, pushing output to 450 horsepower and 510 pound-feet of torque while maintaining a tow rating of around 8,000 pounds in off-road trim. The third generation, introduced in 2021, kept the Gen 2's core upgrades but refined calibration, cooling, and component durability. Standard output in the 2024 F-150 now reaches 400 horsepower and 500 pound-feet of torque, 
while towing capacity has increased to a class leading 13,500 pounds with payload up to 2,445 pounds in the right configuration. In SUVs like the Expedition and Lincoln Navigator, output ranges from 375 to 400 horsepower with torque between 470 and 480 pound-feet, prioritizing smoothness and towing capability for family hauling. Several specialized versions of the 3.5-liter EcoBoost have demonstrated the platform's flexibility. The high-output variant, fitted to the Raptor and certain limited models, delivers 450 horsepower and 510 pound-feet of torque, tuned for aggressive throttle response and sustained boost for off-road or performance driving. At the extreme end, the Ford GT Supercar's twin-turbo 3.5-liter EcoBoost received extensive upgrades. Larger turbos, a dry sump oiling system, unique cylinder heads and bespoke internals, producing 647 to 660 horsepower and 550 pound-feet of torque, showing just how far the architecture can be pushed when freed from mass production constraints. Even the Ford Transit Work van employs a detuned version at 310 horsepower and 400 pound-feet. Thanks to its twin-turbocharged architecture and strong internals, the 3.5-liter EcoBoost has become a favorite in the tuning world. The forced induction system responds exceptionally well to recalibration, and Ford itself acknowledges this with official Ford performance calibrations. The aftermarket takes this further, with tuners often starting by freeing up airflow using upgraded cold air intakes and less restrictive exhaust systems. Larger front-mounted intercoolers are a common upgrade to control charge temperatures during sustained boost, which is critical for towing, track use, or aggressive off-road driving. Beyond bolt-ons, the platform supports larger turbochargers from brands like Garrett, BorgWarner, and Precision Turbo, along with matching fuel system enhancements such as high-capacity low and high-pressure fuel pumps and larger injectors to feed the extra air. With custom ECU calibrations from companies like SCT or Cobb Tuning, it's not uncommon to see well-built street trucks and SUVs breaking the 550 to 600 horsepower mark while retaining daily drivability. While the F-150, Raptor, Expedition, and Lincoln Navigator get the most attention, the 3.5-liter EcoBoost has also powered a wide range of other vehicles. In the crossover segment, it appeared in the Ford Flex from 2010 through 2019, where it brought surprising towing capability to a family hauler. The Ford Taurus SHO, offered from 2010 until 2019, paired this engine with all-wheel drive to create a stealthy performance sedan. Lincoln's MKS sedan, produced from 2010 to 2016, and the MKT crossover, offered through 2019, also used the 3.5-liter EcoBoost to blend luxury with serious torque. Even in commercial settings, such as the Ford Transit from 2015 onward, the engine delivers dependable pulling power for vans loaded to the roof. Reliability-wise, the 3.5-liter EcoBoost shows potential for strong longevity when maintained diligently, but owners commonly report a repeated issues that deserve attention. Timing chain stretch and cam phaser were a recurring headaches. Gen 1 single-chain designs could slacken or rattle, while Gen 2 suffered more cam phaser rattles around 40,000 to 80,000 miles, prompting Ford to issue customer satisfaction program and eventually redesign the phasers. Early generation engines and some early second generation examples could develop a distinct rattling or ticking at cold start that many technicians traced to the cam phaser locking pin and the way the phaser behaved before oil pressure built. In plain terms, the phaser's lock mechanism was intended to hold the cam in a safe rest position with zero oil pressure. When the pin or its retention geometry wore or failed, the phaser could slap or chatter until normal oil pressure re-established timing control. Ford's first line of defense was a series of technical service bulletins that primarily instructed dealers to reflash the powertrain control module calibration to change cam phaser control behavior and, where necessary, replace the cam phasers. Over time, Ford revised the phaser hardware, adding retention cages and reworked springs around the lock pin. To reduce the failure mode, and many repairs required new phasers plus recalibration. While Ford often described the issue as undesirable noise, a subset of owners reported it preceded much more serious failures, including an engine jumping time and subsequent contact between pistons and valves. Closely related to timing system concerns are oil consumption faults that affected certain high-output versions. Ford issued a targeted technical service bulletin for excessive oil consumption 
on some 2018 to 2020 F-150 Raptor and 2019 to 2020 F-150 Limited models equipped with the high output 3.5 liter EcoBoost. Another design choice that has real ownership consequences is the internal water pump on transverse and some longitudinal applications like Explorers and Taurus variants. Because the water pump is driven inside the timing cover and circulates coolant through passages that sit adjacent to the oiling system, a pump failure that leaks coolant into the crankcase can quickly produce catastrophic engine damage. The repair is intensive, replacing an internal water pump often requires removing timing chains and significant disassembly. So when coolant invades oil it can mean engine replacement rather than a simple pump swap. The exhaust manifold on many 3.5-liter EcoBoost engines is prone to warping, cracking, or stud failure due to extreme and repeated heat cycling. Owners frequently report a sharp ticking or rattling noise during cold starts or under hard acceleration, often attributed to leaks around the manifold studs or gasket areas. Some owners have reported oil leaks developing around the turbocharger assembly. This can stem from worn seals or oil supply and return line gaskets leading to visible oil residue near the turbo or increased oil consumption. There is also a blow-off valve failure, which can cause loss of boost pressure, reduced performance, and erratic acceleration. Additionally, spark plug and ignition coil failures are frequent due to the high boost operation, often manifesting as misfires and check engine lights. Users also report intercooler condensation issues, notably in early F-150s under humid conditions, causing misfires or stumble, which can be mitigated with catchkin systems or updated deflectors. Other notable annoyances include the two-piece oil pan or valve cover leaks, turbo coolant line or fitting leaks, and owner anecdotes reveal frequent fuel dilution in oil especially after many cold starts, prompting many to shorten oil change intervals to preserve engine life. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this breakdown and want more straight talk car insights, hit that subscribe button so you never miss a video.